Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a mashup between two iconic sandwiches. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. I thought, what better way to give it justice to make the best sandwich I could possibly make? The Reuben Cuban? You guys, stay tuned. All right, there's a lot of... Uh, Backstory to the sandwich. We've made the Cuban in the past based off my wife experiences. I'm not a Cuban fan. Like it just doesn't really like if all the sandwiches in the world, there's a couple other ones out there that I'd pick a little bit above that. The Reuben that we made last year was phenomenal. We took the corned beef, we braised it, we took it out, and then we made a fantastic Reuben sandwich. Not too long ago, we had kind of like similar ingredients, um, but I wanted just something a little bit different. I wanted like maybe like a little pickle, you know, so I put pickle on it. I accidentally put mustard on it. Did not mean to. Next thing you know, I've got half a Cuban sandwich, half a Reuben sandwich, and we called it the Reuben Cuban just laughing. Well, St. Patrick's Day is upon us. And I thought, what if I really go at it? What if I really give this a go, right? Combine these two iconic sandwiches. I know it seems crazy, but you got the sauerkraut, you got the corned beef, I actually like pastrami with it as well. So I kind of make a corned beef pastrami. Uh, you got the Thousand Island dressing. Then on the Cuban side, you got that loaf bread, the pickles, the mustard, the smoked mojo pork tenderloin, and the ham. Combine it all together, and this is what we got. Our pork is done. It's rested. I just pulled the, uh, the um, golly, it looks so good. The dang corned beef that's been steaming. I got my boar's head ham. Let me show you how I did these two meats. Here's my corned beef. Um, I've just rinsed it off, dried it off really well. Here's my spice mix. Honestly, since I haven't tried it before, you know, it's one of those things where like, yeah, I can give you the recipe, but I'm not guaranteed to sell on it. You know, like I just don't know how great it is. I do know I added more pepper because I really want that pastrami flavor to come through. I want a black pepper style crust. We're going to coat that very well with that. What what type of spices are actually in there? Uh, there's a coarse and 16 mesh black pepper, the thick kind salt, uh, brown sugar, cumin, paprika, uh, mustard seed. That might be it. I think that's it. Anyway, so I tried it out. Um, uh, you know, I like the flavor right now, but we'll see how well it does on that. All right, for the pork tenderloin, um, I've just got some mojo right here. It's like a citrus base with like cumin, salt, garlic, pepper, stuff like that. I don't, I don't think I've tried this one before, but I'm gonna try this one. Uh, we're gonna marinate this while our um, uh, corned beef is smoking. I'm gonna smoke it for four hours, you know, somewhere right through there. And then right at the last hour, I'm gonna put my pork tenderloin on and we're gonna smoke it till it's completely done. We're gonna pull it about 140 to 145 degrees, somewhere through there. And I'm not worried about the internal temperature because of course, after we smoke our corned beef, we're going to steam it. I'll show you guys that. Just a little glue, a little olive oil. All around. Presentation side will be seasoned last. So, a lot of seasoning. Don't be scared of your seasonings. All around the edges. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay. So just to verify, because we didn't see the package, that is a corned beef brisket, the kind that comes, like the kind that you see everywhere for St. Patty's Day. Yep. And then we're just gonna add enough to have really good coverage. I mean, we don't need to drown it. It's cold enough where I can just leave this outside. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just like that. All right, we're gonna give it about three and a half to four hours. Like I said, the last hour, I'm just gonna put the pork tenderloin on, pork tenderloin on there and we're just gonna smoke it to temp. What is our? Uh, 250. Temp. 
I've got some uh, reserve liquid here that did not come to the bag, it came from this. And throughout the process, I'm just gonna be basting it like every 15, 20 minutes. It won't take long for it to cook. Did you change your shirt? Well, it's a little bit warmer than it was this morning. <laughs> Show you guys how beautiful, how much smoke we're getting on that. That is absolutely fantastic. Golly, you see that pepper right there? Ooh, it's gonna be a good sandwich. All right, a lot of things going on right here, so let me show you. Um, it's been about uh, four hours. My pork tenderloin's hitting about 125-ish. So I'm going to take my, oh, dang. Ooh, that looks good. Corned beef off. You guys see that open my flame up. That's the great thing about it. A Pit Boss uh, pellet smoker. Um, I'm not here to sell you on them. I'm just here to tell you what I like and I love the flame option. I just absolutely love it. So I'm going to open it up. You guys can see that the flame's roaring. Take that pork tenderloin, put on that hot spot, try to get some color. For the rest of the 20 degrees, I'm just going to be flipping it and basting it. Instead of boiling or braising, we're going to steam like the idea of pastrami. So I've got my outdoor system set up here. I've got my lodge Dutch oven. Inside of it, I've just got a uh, steaming apparatus. You could use aluminum foil, whatever. Um, I'm just going to take that corned beef right on top of it. And now it's the patience game. One of the things I don't have. Put the pot back, the lid back on it. I'm gonna look about three hours. The whole idea is you're gonna let this just absolutely let that steam do its thing like it would on pastrami. Allow that corned beef and those uh, tough tendons to relax, cook them through and just get like an incredibly tender piece of meat. Okay, real quick question. The point of having like the little steamer basket turned upside down in there is to elevate the beef from the water. Yeah, it's the difference between boil and steam. Okay. All right, now that you see how we do the two meats, I got my Swiss cheese, I got my butter for the bread, I got some Thousand Island dressing, some sauerkraut, some pickles, some mustard. And I've been fighting myself over how many sandwiches we're gonna make, but to be honest with you, I've tasted the I've tasted the meat. That, that mojo is some really good mojo. I don't know what we used last time when we did the Cuban, but I would highly suggest that mojo sauce. It's fantastic. I'm gonna have to break down and make two sandwiches. Do we have enough meat for two sandwiches? We're going to stretch it. I mean, I'm, this is, that, all right, here we go. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Very, very simple downhill. All right, let me get some meat carved up. I mean, this stuff right here. It smells fantastic. I mean, this is. <laughs> Hang on, stop cutting, I got to. Mm. I gotta try some. Mm. That pepper, mm -hmm. got the pastrami effect to it. You got the fat cap that you guys are starting to see now. Oh yeah. I just think that mojo is gonna balance well. You got that heat from the pepper. You got those uh, sour uh, style lemons and oranges to go with this mojo. That all pepper seasoning. I mean, all-purpose seasoning. It's already got the garlic in there, the salt, the pepper again. Mm, 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 mm. I'm just putting that sauerkraut on the griddle just to help it uh, kind of like reduce some of that moisture so it's not as wet. Warm it up a little bit. All right, so we got the bottom that we're working with right here. This is gonna be the Cuban style. So we got the mustard, the pickles. Then you got the, the Swiss cheese. Come back in with the ham and the pork.
All right, come in here with that corned beef. Then we're gonna top that with sauerkraut. <laughs> Cheese. And then of course that Thousand Island dressing at the end. That is one heck of a sandwich. When you can combine the, the griddle and the smoker and two awesome sandwiches. <laughs> We're gonna start off on the cooler side of the griddle just cause the sandwich itself is so big. A lot of butter. Oh yeah, this is what happens. Oh yeah. Since the top of that butter was already hot from the griddle, I'm just basing that bread with it and we're about to flip it over. Attempt to flip it over, that looks like. Oh no, we're going for it. Honestly, I didn't feel like there was a need to press it because there's so much weight when it comes to this that I thought that the, uh, the actual weight of a sandwich will press itself. All right, guys, there you go. We got all of them done. Cut one of them in half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, guys, there you go. The Reuben Cuban. Absolute phenomenal. Everything you want in a sandwich. The crusty, flaky, buttery crust bread. You got the vinegary. You got the sweet. You got the peppercorn from the black because the pastrami. The, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I knew it would be. I'm going to jet back inside really quick. I might have to hammer about the whole thing down. You get half and I get the whole. Neil, <laughs> we fine. have a membership button. It's the join button down below. If you guys have done that, thank each and every one of you for doing so. Check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook. It's where we talk about food, griddles, smokers, you name it. This is a fantastic combination of what you can combine when you have both of them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Mm, delicious. Golly.